This is Art 101 with Gary Graves. Today we're covering pretty much watercolor. I'm doing a very unique Aztec type of theme and right now uh, we're going to be doing just some basic colors on this today. I'm not going to go over drawing. Uh, that can be done by multiple methods from freehand to scale drawing to grid methods to projectors. I like to use projectors for a quick project or in case I'm trying to make a couple bucks. So what we've got going here is we're just going to be doing some basic because this is going to be kind of a cultural, a little bit older looking thing, uh, painting. So remember, I don't speak that well. So that's just going to be established. But I do really good painting. So I'm using a crimson red, yellow ochre, burnt sienna. I'm going to be also using a type of uh, serpentine, which is kind of a really dark brown. I'm just going to use that to really kind of push back some colors. I'm also using um, a cerulean blue. And we're going to be using a little bit of white, but that's just going to be towards the end, uh, as well as we're using burnt umber. I'm using a small palette because uh, I just don't want to have it get too advanced too far. We're going to be going through about five different layers. If you remember, watercolor is just very thin. Just take it easy. I mean, um, and also, this is art. Relax. Have a, do whatever makes you feel creative. Eating chocolate, having a glass of wine. Whatever gets those creative juices going, that's what you need to work on and just relax. This is something fun. So pretty much we're going to start with the initial wash just to get a basic tone. And that initial wash is just going to be a very, very light base color. Number two, we're going to be adding warm and dark, I'm sorry, warm and cool shadows. So that's where the red and the blue is going to come in. Because if you look at my face, the light's hitting my face in certain spots. You can tell there's blood there. But, uh, as well as it's still a shadow. But you can also tell with other sides of my face where there's a shadow, it looks a little bit more lighter, almost like a blue. We're not gonna use any real black. Well, I'm not gonna try not to use. Uh, I'm debating on the background. So what ends up happening is from there, we're gonna, next layer, we're gonna make the color stronger, a little bit more vibrant, vibrant and another layer it's gonna be sort of like the finishing final colors. And we're just, we may or may not throw in another layer in, because I'm not sure this will need it, uh, for more sharper details. The other thing is I'm going to be mixing different types of gold medias into this. So she'll be really standing out and have a nice little pop to it. Some people like to use colored pencils. They like to use uh, acrylics. And they even like to add a little oil to different uh, paintings. Uh, for this day, we're going to try to stick to this as much as we can. I'm going to be uh, doing some audio during the spe uh, <laughs> some of the processes uh, when we're kind of fast forwarding through there because this painting may take an hour to three hours. Some people may take a lot longer. I can just paint fast. That's just a thing. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to start this off with initial just plain old water. Just get the canvas soaked. You want your watercolor paper to be just stapled down with some tape. Just use something like scotch tape. Comes off, doesn't rip the paper easily. Get a nice border. And this way it stretches out the paper. And when you do watercolor, make sure the air is a little wet. We're gonna do wet on wet first and closer to the end, the lighter layers. I'm gonna say, as well as just add some graphics of saying, when we're going to be doing uh, wet on to dry, as well as what other methods I can really think of at the time to help you guys out. And remember, if you have any questions or if you want me to cover oil, airbrush, even spray paint, like the little graffiti work, <laughs> just go on my website or go on youtube.com, put it underneath the comments, I'll review it and the most popular ones we will cover. So this is going to be a different type of art class. You guys get to dictate what the next class will be. So, let's have a little bit of fun.
All right, for some basic tools, tutorial real quick. People say, oh, painting can't be rushed, bull. Here's what you can do. Watercolor takes a while to dry, and I'm a busy man. You're a busy person. So, I like to use a blow dryer. I call it the cheater method, but I like it. Like, when it comes to doing drawings this scale, yeah, actual sketches, good. blow it up using an art projector, put it on here, takes me less than half the amount of time to do another full sketch just freehand. You know, most people don't have the time for that. I, <laughs> I'm using this uh, Tracer Projector Junior, so it's made for kids, but it does a pretty good job of taking the, getting the idea across. Like I said, good method. I'm trying to cheat for this. Uh, there are different types of paints to look at. Uh, one with that being is there's some people that just get the traditional uh, little disc. And those don't really work as well as you might think. Like in there. Uh, that's just a little tray. I had my other one over there. But the little dry disc don't really work that well. They're a lot older. They don't come off that well. They're not as vibrant. Uh, you can get um, somewhat hard bricks like this where they're a lot better quality, a lot finer, and the color gets out there a little bit better. So these little palettes, this is like 14 bucks. Hey, that's not a bad way to go. It's also small and in case you lose it. Well, apparently not 14 bucks. But for most of my paints, I just went to Walmart. Like, eh, it was close to 750, depends where you're at. I got a whole, just simple watercolor packets. Comes in a tube. Color is a lot more rich this way. You can get a lot higher quality products, but this is just a simple tutorial. I'm not wasting that money. <laughs> also, if you're practicing, I wouldn't go for the Ritz right away. Just get the cheapy stuff, have a little practice. You can always get the expensive stuff later. I do admit I like the expensive stuff, but I'm cheap. The other thing, if you're gonna be doing art, it doesn't matter what type of media, Make sure you get something to hold your brushes in that's easy to get a hold of. I mean, this thing can wrap around a lot of surfaces. A lot of good brushes here. Some more cheapy dollar, like uh, 10 for a dollar packs and some more 14, 15 dollar brushes. But that's just the thing. Uh, you have to be comfortable with what you're using. The other thing is change your water out. It changes it quite frequently. It's just one of those things. The other thing I wish to go over is when we're going to be done with this, you're going to see me bring on a knife. I'm scratching this because certain spots, opaque white paint will not make a good highlight. So scratching the paper will reveal the white paper underneath. That's a good way to go. So let's have a little bit more fun. Uh, I'm just going to get started real quick with this and 